In this video, we're going to look at how we can scale sets of data. So it says here, if you add a number to every element in a set of data, then you add that number to the mean. But the standard deviation is unchanged. If you multiply every element in a set of data by a number, then you multiply the mean by that number, and you multiply the standard deviation by that number. Okay, right, let's do a wee diagram to explain this. So if I've got, uh, if I've got a, a, a number line, and I've got a few numbers, a few numbers on that uh, number line. So I've got a number here, a number here, and a number here. Now I say I took every number and I just add, so they would have a certain mean. So say their mean, uh, first of all, would be, say their mean, the average of those uh, numbers is somewhere about here. Now then I took all of those numbers and I added one to them. So this first one would now be over here, the next one would be over here, and the next one the last one would be over here. So the mean would just be shifted up uh, by one. So the mean would also just be, everything has been shifted up by one. So the mean will also just be shifted up by one. Okay. Say I had, I'll just change my uh, numbers a wee bit. So say I had uh, my uh, numbers and they were they were here. So I have one here and one here. We'll just do the two of them actually. And then what I do is I multiply those numbers by two. So this first one, then uh, it's at one, say it's at, uh, at one. It is now going to be at two. The second one, which is at two, is now going to be at four. So if you remember what the standard deviation is, standard deviation is a measure of spread. So the spread at the start was just, uh, it's just one. The spread now is two. The difference or the between them or the spread between them is two. So by multiplying all of the numbers by something, you multiply the standard deviation by that same thing because they're more spread out. Whereas if you just add them all, then all they have done is just shift it up the scale. If you add or subtract, it just shift it up the scale. So uh, you're not going to do anything uh, to the uh, anything to the standard deviation. Okay, we're going to look at a couple of examples then. Uh, it says, find the mean and standard deviation of the following sets of data. So there's a smart way of doing this, a not so smart way. The not so smart way is when you work out the mean and standard deviation of every set. The smart way is you work out the mean and standard deviation of the first set, and then you think, well, what is the relationship between set A, set B, set C, and set D? And then you can just uh, transform your means and your standard deviations. So, Let's get started doing our uh, part A, our part one. So this is for set A. So I'm just going to write, do my table. I'm going to have my x values and then corresponding x squared values. It was one, two, three, four, five. So that's square those. You're going to have one, four, nine, sixteen, and twenty-five. And then if you have a look and just sum those up, you'll have sigma x is just going to be equal to fifteen. And sigma x squared is just going to be equal to uh, 55. So your mean, first of all, is going to be equal to sigma x divided by n, which is just going to be 15 divided by 5, which is going to be 3. Your standard deviation is going to be sigma x squared divided by n minus your mean. Uh, I would just say, we'll say that is just our x bar squared and we'll square it of all that to see what we get so sigma x squared was 55 number of values is 5 minus our mean which we were told or we had worked out sorry as 3 squared and we'll square it of all that and see what you get so that's going to be 55 divided by 5 is going to be 11 minus um, the 3 squared which is 9 so 11 minus 9 is going to be 2 so it's just going to be uh, root 2 could also grab your calculator and it would come out as a root 2. I've left that as a root 2 because that's an exact perfect value. Okay, right, now we're on to part 2. We don't want to have to do that again, but we want to think, how do you actually get from set A to set B? So what do you have to do to get from the set of A numbers, the set of uh, the set of number B? And what you do is you add 10. So just put that in a circle to explain what I'm doing. So my new mean for B it's just going to be my old mean, which was 3 plus 10, which is going to be 13. My standard deviation 
adding 10 to every everything here and here was a lovely example for us to see it look how spread out these things are they're all the same distance between the first one and the last same distance between the first one and the last so standard deviation is unchanged so the standard deviation is the same as it was it is still root 2 okay uh, part so that was part 2 we've just done part 3 then we're on to part 3 part 3 think let's think how we get from A to C so to get from A to C what you do is you multiply by 6 so that means the mean is going to be the original mean which was 3 times 6 so that's going to give you 18 and the new standard deviation is going to be root 2 times 6 which is the same as just 6 root 2 okay and our last one we bit trickier I think uh, part 4 you're thinking how do you get from A to D so you've got to go from 1 to 16 so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply by 6 and then add 10. So we're going to have to do that to our mean. So our new mean is going to be uh, 6 times the 3 and then plus 10, which is going to be 18 plus 10. So my new mean is going to be 28. And if you have a look at those, it looks fairly like a fairly sensible answer. Our standard deviation, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, for the mean, remember, we did 6 times 3 and then adding 10. But adding 10 doesn't do anything to your standard deviation. So you've just got to do 6 times uh, six times the original standard deviation, which was root 2. So it's going to be 6 root 2. And there we have it. Okay, just in general, just to finish this off, this video. If a set, if a set of data, uh, set of data x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn has a mean of x bar, and a standard deviation of s subscript x, then scaling the data using the formula y is equal to a plus ax plus b, it will have a new mean y bar equals ax bar plus b, and the standard deviation of s of y is equal to a times s of x. This we vert these vertical lines, so modulus of a, that just means whatever it is, make it positive. So say you scale them by multiplying by minus 5, you would do your new mean, sorry, your new standard deviation would be 5 times S of X. And that is it. Next example says, John's main mark in all his music tests was 81 and the standard deviation was 12. His teacher decided to scale all the marks using the formula Y is equal to 2X minus 3, where Y is a new mark and X is the original mark. Find John's new mean and new standard deviation. So we've got our mean. To do the mean, it's going to be y bar. Uh, this is converting this into the mean. It's y bar is equal to 2 times x bar minus 3. And for your standard deviation, it's going to be just s of y is equal to, and it's going to be 2 times your s of x, where s of y is your new standard deviation, s of x is the original standard deviation. So for John, uh, his the mean is going to be equal to 2 times 81 and then minus 3, which is just going to be 159 when we work that out. For his standard deviation, it's just going to be 2 times his original standard deviation, which was 12. So it's going to be 24. And that is it done. This is probably a better example this one because this is showing a, a really good use for scaling data. So the re reason you would scale two sets of data is so that they are comparable. So you can look at one and look at the other one and you can actually make a comparison between them so that uh, they have the same maybe mean and they have the same standard deviation. So in this example it says, in order to compare performances in two different schools, a test was given. The mean mark of school A was 45 and the mean in school B was 31 with a standard deviation of 5. Uh, the mean and standard deviation of school A are scaled to match uh, school B using the transformation um, uh, equation. Y is equal to AX plus B. If a mark changes from 85 to 63, find the value of A and B and the original standard deviation of school A. Okay, an awful lot going on in that uh, example. So let's just write down what we know our transformation equation is. It's Y is equal to AX 
plus b. And that means that your y bar, your new mean, is going to be a times x bar plus b. And it also means your new standard deviation is going to be a times s of x. And then we're just going to have a look at this uh, big example and see if we can pick anything out. So it says a mark is changed from 85 to 63. So that means 85 goes to 63. So that's putting that into this equation here. You're going to have 63 is equal to 85a plus b. That's, that's an equation with two unknowns. Call that equation 1. Let's read through and see if we can find anything else. It says... Um, the mean and standard deviation of a school A are scaled to match school B. So school A had a mean of 45. So that means a mean of 45 goes to, and school B had a mean of 31. So that's quite hard to pick out, but we're going to put that into this equation, which means 31 is equal to 45A plus B, and that's going to be our equation 2. Now, clearly what we're going to do is we're going to solve our equation 1 and our equation 2 and see what we get. So I'm just going to write down my equation 1 underneath my equation 2. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract those, but I'm going to do equation 1 minus equation 2. So 63 minus 31 is going to give me 32. And 85 minus 45 is going to give me 40A. And the B minus B, they cancel out. And then you've got your A is going to be equal to 32 divided by 40, which works out nicely as just 0.8. So we're just going to put that back into equation 1. So sub into equation 1. So that's 63 is equal to 85 times 0.8 plus B. And then we will go up here and have a look at what that means. That means 63 is equal to 85 times 0.8 would give you uh, 68 plus b. So your b works out to be minus 5. So if you're a good mathematician, you'll know if you rewrite your equation once you find your unknowns, y is equal to, uh, what was my a? a was 0.8x minus 5. And then you can do whatever you want from here. So what we have done is we have found the values of a and b, we are asked now to find the original standard deviation of school A. So uh, we know that for school A, school A it is scaled so that your s of y is equal to 5. So we're just going to put that into this formula over here. So that means 5 is equal to a, which is 0.8 times your s of x, that means 5 divided by 0.8 is equal to your standard deviation. So your s of x is equal to 5 divided by 0.8 is going to give you 6.25. And that is us done.